Hi, in this film I'm going to evaluate Immanuel Kant. And if you look at my books and revision guides, you'll find that there are four basic questions that we ask. First, how do we derive the idea of goodness? Secondly, how do we apply it? Thirdly, is it realistic? And fourthly, motivation. How does it answer the question, why should I be moral? I'm going to look at the first three briefly. Derivation of the good. Kant asks us to universalise our behaviour, to take an imaginative step out of the situation and ask a, a fairly simple question, what would the world be like if everyone behaved like this? And can we reasonably universalise our action to create a maxim that becomes categorical? And the problem here lies with the word categorical because it means there are no exceptions contrasted with hypothetical, meaning with reference to a situation. So if I'm in a difficult situation, it is okay to lie. That word if making it hypothetical. The problem with Kant is uh, well illustrated by the example of the crazy axe murderer. An axe murderer arrives at our door, asks us the question, is your friend hiding behind the sofa? And we're supposed to reply, yes, he or she is, because we must always tell the truth. The problem with that is that we'd never universalise that situation in that sort of way. We would universalise that anyone in exactly that kind of situation must tell a lie, because saving the life of our friend is more important than telling the truth in that situation. And anyway, we don't need to answer the question, we might say. So this indicates a problem that it's difficult to universalise without a set of circumstances at the back of our mind, which suggests to me, something for you to think about, that in fact these categoricals are in practice hypothetical. If you're in that kind of situation, you should tell a lie. Secondly, let's think about application, which really moves on from this. And let's ask the question, is Kant easy to apply in every situation? And the answer to that is possibly not, because one of the basic problems in ethics is what you do when two moral goods come into conflict. So let's consider a business ethics case with the value loyalty. We could universalise the idea that we should always be loyal to those to whom we owe our loyalty. But the problem in business ethics becomes what happens when two concepts of loyalty come into conflict? So for a whistleblower, we may be thinking on the one hand that we are loyal to our company, but on the other hand, we are loyal to our country and its laws. And the two loyalties can come into conflict. For example, when we are expected to offer a bribe overseas to ensure a, a contract is gained, as in the case recently of Rolls-Royce, we have loyalty to our co company, we want Rolls-Royce to make money and to keep us in employment, versus loyalty to our country, which says that bribery for contracts is always wrong. Now, Kant doesn't help us here. You can't have two categoricals operating in two ways at once, because one of them has to give, and therefore always be loyal cannot always be true especially when two ideas of loyalty are in conflict. Thirdly, what about the question of realism? And I want to illustrate this with reference to a specific case, the case of Oscar Schindler in the film, or the extract on, is on the Pepehead site, where he looks at the purging of the ghetto, where the, the Germans, the Nazis, are coming in and they are killing, shooting, and rounding up indiscriminately. And you might remember the incident, if you've seen the film, of the girl with the red dress, this young picture of innocence, deliberately picked out in red to contrast her with the black, bleak, the black and white, the bleak circumstances around her. And I think the, uh, that um, she's deliberately picked out to make this point. And we read in the book that when Oscar Schindler has seen this example, this incident of uh, Nazi horror, that he turns his horse round and then he gets off his horse and he 
feels like he's going to throw up, he's going to vomit, he's going to be sick because he's so horrified with what he's just seen. Now it's clear that that is a profound emotional response to evil. And it, it raises the question, do we act morally simply because of an exercise of reason? Or do we act morally very often because our emotions are stirred? Now remember that for Kant, you cannot act out of emotion alone. That makes the act morally worthless. You only act morally when you universalise a priori from a, a situation where you imagine take an imaginative leap and you ask that question, what would happen if everybody behaved like this? Now the case of Oscar Schindler shows us, I think, you can convert to the cause of goodness, as he does, from being a bit of a rogue who's a friend of the Nazis, to being somebody who conspires to save hundreds of Jewish people by employing them. You can convert to that simply out of emotion, in the same way that you can throw yourself, it, it's yourself into the sea to save a drowning stranger purely out of emotion. Out of an emotion, for example, of sympathy and empathy for that person, as the utilitarians argue. And so I think we can conclude from this that you can't rule emotions out of moral thinking. In a sense, to say that a, 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 an action that's made taken out of emotion is simply not relevant or even uh, not relevant in any sense from a moral point of view is at best a gross oversimplification and at worst it distorts the nature of the moral argument.